A new study published in the New England Journal of Medicine suggests that eating better isn't really enough to optimize your brain health. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the director of Metabolic Mind, a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group, where we focus on the connection of metabolic health and mental health, and metabolic therapies like ketogenic therapies as therapies for mental illness. Now, we've done a series of videos focusing on ketogenic therapies and cognition or risk of dementia or treatment for dementia. Well, now the timing is pretty good because we just released those videos and now a paper comes out in New England Journal of Medicine titled Trial of the Mind Diet for Prevention of Cognitive Decline in Older Persons. And I really want to highlight this because it, it really helps us see the difference between a diet of quote eating better or eating more like brain foods versus the, the physiologic intervention of ketosis and changing the body's physiology, which can be achieved by many different dietary approaches, but having a ketogenic intervention, which has shown benefits for cognitive decline, as you've heard in our interviews with um, Amy Berger, Dr. Mary Newport, and um, Dr. Matthew Phillips. Let's get into this trial, but the, the basics of it is that they put people on this MIND diet, which is a DASH Mediterranean hybrid with 250 calories caloric restriction versus their standard diet with a 250 calorie restriction. And they found no difference at three years in terms of how, how much they improved or declined from a cognitive standpoint or from MRI status of their brain. So the quick summary is that there was no difference um, with this type of diet. Now, let's get into the background and some of the details because I think it really helps show these difference in diets. All right, so first, a little bit more about this MIND diet. So it says it's a Mediterranean DASH intervention for neurodegenerative delay. It incorporates components of both the Mediterranean and DASH diet with modifications to include foods that have been putatively associated with a decreased risk of Alzheimer's disease, slower cognitive decline, and fewer neuropathologic changes of Alzheimer's disease. So that includes, you know, green leafy vegetables, plant-based foods, nuts, berries, fish, and olive oil, limiting foods with high levels of saturated fat and sugar, as if those are the same thing, saturated fat and sugar, which of course they're not, such as red or processed meat, butter, margarine, whole fat cheese, pastry, sweets, and fried foods. Love how they just lump those together. Sarcastic, of course. But anyway, um... So it's a healthy style diet, right? What a lot of people would consider as a healthy diet. And it also says, goes to like, what is the, the standard of evidence? What is the quality of evidence that suggests a lot of these foods are healthy for cognitive function? And that's where we get into these, you know, observational studies where people who ate more blueberries or ate more plant foods or ate more whole grains had slower cognitive decline. Well, in these big observational studies, they're prone to poor data collection, to healthy user bias, to confounding variables, to very low odds ratios, which you know I've covered before, but if these are new terms for you, basically what they mean is the quality of the evidence is incredibly poor. And it really doesn't tell us that something is good or bad for you. It brings up the question of maybe it is and should be followed up with further studies. So hats off to this group for doing this study, a randomized control trial that actually does the intervention. Now, the other important part is who were these people? So they were older than 65, they had to do pretty well on their mental status exam, 22 or above, so they could have very mild cognitive impairment or basically normal cognitive function. They had to be overweight and have a family history of Alzheimer's dementia and have what they called suboptimal diets based on this MIND score. And to their credit, they, they did um, dietary assessments throughout. So they showed by the end of the trial that the interventions worked. The baseline group increased their mind score by 0.5 points, whereas the intervention group increased their mind score by 3.5 points. So clearly more of following the mind diet. And they actually supplied them with blueberries and nuts and olive oil, kind of cool. Whereas the other group, the control group, they gave a $30 gift card to go buy food. So that was kind of a cool part. And the other cool part was it's a three-year trial, right? It wasn't just like a 12-week or a six-week intervention like so many dietary trials are. So a three-year trial, pretty cool um, to give you that type of long-term um, outcome. Now, the main outcomes were improvement in the global cognition score. And um, in the MIND diet group, 
it went up 0.2 standard units, and in the control group, 0.1. Now, I did some digging in the literature to try and find, figure out what is a clinically relevant change, because I have no idea what a clinically relevant change in the score is, and I found one paper that said 0.5 is clinically relevant. So both of these changes are below clinical relevance. And even though there was a slight difference, it was completely statistically not significant. It was not statistically significant. So essentially, no change statistically between the two groups. All right, so why am I highlighting a study that showed essentially no difference? Well, because it goes back to this point that I brought up in the beginning that that eating better, eating brain healthy foods, sure, might improve a little bit. Like everybody lost a little bit of weight. They might have improved their metabolic health a little bit. I didn't see any measurements of that. And their cognitive scores, you know, changed a little bit um, for people who weren't significantly impaired at baseline, but were at risk with a family history and who were overweight. But that is very different from what I've been talking about here at the Metabolic Mind channel and what my past interviews have been with um, Amy Berger and Dr. Mary Newport and Dr. Matthew Phillips about this concept of a ketogenic intervention for brain health and for cognitive health because that's what changes the chemistry and the physiology and the metabolism of your brain. And you can get there probably with a mind dash type or with a mind Mediterranean dash diet. If it was low enough in carb, you could get there and be, have a ketogenic intervention. You can get there with a vegetarian diet. You can get there with a carnivore diet. You can get there with an omnivore diet, right? It's it, The diet doesn't matter so much as as it does the point of therapeutic ketosis. And so that's, that's what I think this study really highlights that I want us to walk away with. Like what is, you know, how can we improve our mental health and cognitive function a little bit? And how can we really optimize it and have the strongest intervention. And I think the evidence is starting to show that ketogenic interventions is how we achieve the latter. All right. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this quick review. Uh, please leave a comment below what you think about the different dietary approaches. And please remember there are channels for informational purposes only. We're not providing any individual or group medical or healthcare advice and not establishing a provider patient relationship. Many of the interventions we discuss here can have uh, dangerous effects if not done without proper supervision. So please do not change your medications or your lifestyle without consulting with your healthcare provider first. All right, thank you so much for joining us here at Metabolic Mind. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, and we'll see you again next time.